Many of us grew up listening to Marcus Houston's music as a member of Immature, IMX, and as he became a solo artist. We've also enjoyed watching him on TV shows like Sister, Sister, Go Home, Roger. But sadly, the Los Angeles native has lost a buttload of fans over the years due to some major missteps and his personal choices, including his marriage to his teenage bride, Maya Dickey. <laughs> Just kidding. But we do want you to scoop up something to munch on over at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of carne asada beef jerky, toasted corn nuts, and buffalo ranch popcorn. Marcus has an impressive list of girlfriends, and they're all baddies including actress Jennifer Freeman, who he was allegedly engaged to. And before y'all start, no, he never dated Beyonce. I mean, there was always a rumor about you and Beyonce. Yeah. Any truth in that? So moving on, in 2015, his Dinner with the Stanker Shets co-star Karuchi Tran posted an Instagram photo with her miniature cheeks poking out. Marcus took to the comment section to respond. Dazam. Look at all that booty. Can't even see your face, cause that booty in the way. Karuchi's ex-boyfriend, Chris Brown, wasn't having it. He took a screenshot of Marcus's comment and reposted it to his Instagram story with the caption, Go home, Roger. From there, Marcus retreated from the spotlight to get right with the Lord. In July 2016, he announced that after years of partying and reckless living, he was turning his life around by getting baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. Aside from handing out literature and knocking on people's doors like they the police, Jehovah's Witnesses abide by a strict moral code, which forbids premarital sex, homosexuality, gender transitioning, adultery, smoking, drunkenness, substance abuse, and blood transfusions. Sounds like hell to us. <laughs> Thankfully, he had a lot of support and guidance from his longtime friend and mentor, Chris Stokes, who's the mastermind behind Immature and B2K. Meanwhile, Maya was born on October 7, 2000, and grew up in California. She told Rolling Out magazine she was primarily raised by her grandparents, and although her father wasn't in her life, she had a good relationship with her mother. As a teenager, her family introduced her to the Jehovah's Witnesses. During a Jehovah's Witness convention, she approached a girl and told her they should be friends. That girl turned out to be Chrissy. Shortly after meeting Chrissy, Chrissy introduced Maya to Chris. Maya developed a deep bond with the Stokes family and now refers to Chris as her spiritual father since her real father isn't around. At a 2018 Jehovah's Witness convention, Chrissy introduced 37-year-old Marcus to 17-year-old Maya. During an episode of TV One's Uncensored, Marcus said they didn't really engage in any kind of conversation, and they didn't have a connection initially. After Maya turned 18 and Marcus was 38, he said they started talking more. He added, And, you know, when we did finally start to talk, I was like, this woman is like me. Maya told Rolling Out that Marcus was a bit standoffish at first, but after he got more comfortable, he started to open up. Over a period of time, she started to feel like there was a mutual interest. So what did 38-year-old Marcus have in common with 18-year-old Maya? He told Uncensored that they have a spiritual connection. They both love God and they have a love for music. He fell in love with her kindness, her heart, and she reminded him a lot of his mother, who passed away from lymphoma in 1997. Maya confirmed they didn't start dating until after she turned 18, but dating as a Jehovah's Witness is a bit different from how y'all heathens get down. <laughs> She told Rolling Out that Marcus asked her grandma for permission to date her, and her grandma said yes. Then came the courting process. Courting is defined as the slow process of pursuing someone through long and intimate conversations to establish an emotional bond. Then they got to know each other's family members, and her uncles grilled him about his intentions. Lastly, he asked her if they could date exclusively, and she said yes. None of these phases of their relationship included any sort of hanky-panky. Marcus expressed that he didn't want to have children, but after getting to know Maya, he changed his mind. He told Rolling Out, You know, when you love someone so much, of course you want to have a baby with them. 
They went Instagram official on October 20th, 2018, 13 days after Maya's 18th birthday. 13 days. Dang, dog. He just couldn't wait, huh? <laughs> Once people put the pieces of the puzzle together and discovered the couple's 19-year age gap, they were appalled. Online users accused Marcus of robbing the cradle, while others were creeped out that he was even attracted to someone who was still a teenager. Well, the outrage got even louder when Marcus and Maya got engaged in March 2019, just five months after they started dating. But for Jehovah's Witnesses, this really wasn't out of the ordinary. A brief engagement is preferable to prevent lust from causing the premature loss of chastity. Because, you know, no one wants to end up in the fiery pits of hell just because they were getting their back blown out before marriage. With the public losing their ish over Marcus being engaged to a teenager, he addressed the naysayers in a lengthy essay. Oops, I mean in an Instagram post. <laughs> Marcus broke down the timeline of their relationship and reiterated that he didn't start dating her until she was 18. He also stated that all the people closest to him love her, and most importantly, they had Jehovah's blessing. He ended his statement by writing he had nothing to hide. But from there, an interesting rumor started circulating online. An online website claimed Maya matched the name and image of a woman found on the National Database for Missing Teenagers. According to the website, a teenager named Mayanna Juanita Dickey was declared missing in Oregon in 2016 when she was 15. The website stated that Mayanna's birth mother, Paula Harris, lost parental rights and Mayanna was adopted in California in 2012. Her adoptive parents shared with the website that they believed she fled their Oregon home to visit her biological mother, Paula, or her maternal grandmother. Now, we did some digging and found this Instagram post of Maya and her biological mom. Maya tagged her mom, and when we clicked on her mom's profile, her name is Paula, the same name of the biological mother that was listed on the national database for missing teenagers. Mm, mm, mm. Jehovah take the wheel. So were the rumors true? Was Maya really a runaway? Well, as far as we can tell, Maya nor Marcus have addressed the allegations. In August 2020, 19-year-old Maya and 39-year-old Marcus got married in California in front of a small number of guests due to the pandemic. Marcus told People Magazine that they didn't do special vows. Instead, they opted for a special handshake when the officiator announced, you may kiss the bride. They welcomed their daughter Zara in December 2021, and they settled into a nice, quiet life together. Marcus released his seventh solo album in 2022, and in April 2023, he stuck his foot in his mouth big time. During a chat with Page Six, Marcus once again defended his right to marry a teenager by stating women his age have too much baggage. Wait, if women his age have baggage, then doesn't that mean he has baggage too? <laughs> You know what? Never mind. He went on to say that women his age were typically single mothers, and that was a red flag for him. He never wanted to have children, and his dad always told him that if he did have kids, he needed to be with someone that didn't have kids, so there was no baby daddy drama. He also said women his age were too independent and acted like they didn't need a man in their life, but he was a provider, and he wanted to be with someone he could take care of. He went on to say that he has dated a lot of women, but Maya was the one who captured his heart. She was everything he prayed for and everything he wanted in a woman. He added, although she was young, I'm young in spirit. His statements turned so many people off that his former immature bandmate, Jerome Jones, issued an apology on Marcus's behalf. Jerome also stated Marcus's views didn't reflect those of the group. Now, let's get down to the nitty gritty. There's absolutely nothing wrong with relationships that have a significant age gap. However, we need some of our mature besties to chime in. How different were you from the time you were 17 until the time you turned 25? And at the age of 45, were you the same person you were when you were 35? How much does a person really change from their teenage years to their adult years? 
Being that Maya was a teenager when she and Marcus got married, she'll definitely go through some changes as she settles into adulthood. The only problem is that she'll be going through those changes alone instead of growing and evolving alongside a partner who is closer in age to her. Maya was young, impressionable, abandoned by her biological father, and allegedly a runaway when she met Marcus. Meanwhile, Marcus was an adult with a string of failed relationships under his belt and an established entertainer by the time he met Maya. But if we look even deeper into their relationship, their pairing actually makes sense. Since her father wasn't in her life, she may be subconsciously drawn to an older man who can also play the role of a father figure. And as for Marcus, since he lost his mom when he was still a teenager, it makes sense that he gravitated towards someone whom he says reminds him a lot of his deceased mother. Now for some news Maya and Marcus probably don't want to hear. Jehovah's Witnesses have one of the highest divorce rates among those in organized religion, with evangelical Protestants and historically black Protestants taking the top two spots. The good news is most Jehovah's Witnesses are more inclined to work through their marital issues by seeking advice from their publications, their church meetings, and from elders at their church. They also strictly adhere to the Bible's view of marriage and divorce, and the only scriptural grounds for divorce is sexual immorality. In other words, it's highly likely that Maya and Marcus will spend the rest of their lives together, unless one of them decides to say, screw the church, and go buck wild all of a sudden. As outsiders looking in, this relationship seems all sorts of strange, and if Marcus didn't have the comments limited on his account, we just might add a few red flag emojis to his most recent post. However, their relationship appears to be working just fine for them, and at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below, and thanks for watching RRG.